Hey guys, uh, welcome to another 8.30 RPG video. Lex here. I wanted to give an update on something I've been trying for a while now on this channel. As uh, you might be familiar, if you do follow my channel, you are well aware that I'm very inconsistent with my videos as far as what rules I use, what method I do for my solo play, and what mechanics I prefer to try. Uh, I've been getting really, really tired of using different types of tables and charts and oracle systems, um, using AI too often to generate uh, outcomes and everything from location names to weather conditions, etc. I wanted to draw more creativity for myself, so I developed a really simple oracle system. And this, I pr I've used this before in my earlier videos, not, not too often, but I, I have used this before. But I feel like it's time to finalize it for, um, for, for moving forward on, the, on my videos. So basically, my Oracle system is a 2D20 system. And I have to use, uh, obviously, two different colors to signify yes and no. So typically, my yes is this, is this frost, and no is red. Now, uh, this is good enough to do for completely luck-based uh, questions. So... Perhaps this might be more suitable for questions that are outside the character's control. But, a lot of questions for an oracle and in solo play, from my experience, are related to the character. Or from the character's point of view, as I like to call it. So, a modifier has to be applied. And I believe what's best for uh, using t a d20 as, as a oracle, as a question for an oracle is to use a d6 as a modifier. So we have two, uh, two options here for yes or no. So if uh, let's work off an example. So let's say that we have a character that approaches a bridge in a forest. The bridge scales perhaps maybe 30, 40 feet, but it looks incredibly old and rickety. So with that in mind, uh, all questions that I typically like to ask is uh, from the point of view of the character success rate. So uh, the question would be, can my character cross this bridge successfully? Because I mentioned earlier the bridge was old and rickety, we have to apply a negative, uh, a negative value on that, a negative uh, modifier. So two would be, the negative on, uh, I'm sorry, two would be the strength of the no. So, for example, let's say, let's bump it up to three. So that increases the chance for no. But we also have the fact that my, perhaps my adventurer is well experienced in survival. So let's give him a plus four. All right, actually, you know what? Let's let's do a let's give no an upper hand on this one. So we'll do a two on the yes for success. That is basically off the character's uh, strength of being a survivor. But the bridge is in terrible condition, so let's bump this up to a four as the no. So we have to beat whatever the total would be for the no with our yes. So, we have our modifier set. Let's roll the no first. So 15 is a very strong no. So we really have to hope for the best that our character can cross his bridge with our two modifier. I'm rolling the, 12, the 20 right now. And our yes is a very pathetic six with the two. So that's eight compared to a 19 total of no. So, that is a very, very strong no, even with the modifier in play, a very low modifier too. Now, we're not done yet. This doesn't only emphasize the basic, the, the concept of yes and no, but this also is the gap we have to consider. This is what will construct the magnitude of the outcome. It's a very strong no compared to our six yes. So I like to position it kind of, let's set the modifiers aside and 
kind of position it a little higher up just to show the difference between the two. So thinking like the bottom here is one, the top here is 20. So we got 15, six would be just past here. And we put the modifiers on the side. I always like to have no to the right and yes to the, to the left. Just, you know, like how you read a book from left to right. So basically, not only is the, br the bridge old, but we fall through the bridge. We barely catch ourselves. We're, we probably perhaps got to, we got 25%. So let's say it's a 30 foot bridge. We got five, per five foot feet. We basically just went five feet onto the bridge and we fell through. However, we didn't fall completely through. We didn't fall to our death. If, if this was a 20, strong 20, then we would, have, we would have fell to our death. But it's a 19. So I'm obviously mistaken right there. So it's a little more higher here. So it's a 19. I'm sorry. I forgot the modifier for the no. The two would be a eight for the six. So right about here. So we fall through. But we, ha uh, we catch it with our hand on one of the boards. So we're basically hanging for dear life. That's how my Oracle Wood system would work. And a very simple approach to that. So the modifiers, the yes or no, the yes or no, and then the gap, which si this symbolizes. A, this is literally the magnitude of the outcome. If let's, let's try a different one. So let's say... It's funny how it's always hard to come up with examples compared to when you're actually in play. Um, let's say our character is sitting in a park and he sees a mugging going on in the distance. Our character is a very well experienced seasonal, a seasoned adventurer. He's well equipped, he has, a, he has a sword, he has a shield, he has a full plate of armor. Etc. A generic, a generic adventurer for the story, but uh, and then the muggers in the distance, they're basically two against one. They're, they're probably just two bandits uh, trying to steal some goods from a merchant that our character sees. So uh, we're fairly distant away, but we can easily see it. It's daylight. It's clear conditions. There's no weather obstructions. There's, um, let's say the area, we can even ask the Oracle how busy the area is for us to even see it. So if we're, we probably don't even have to ask the Oracle for that. Cause, cause if we can, if there's a mugging going on in the distance, then the bandits are not dumb enough to do it when the area is populated. It's heavily populated. So let's say there's not a lot of people around. We're the only ones in the park and we see a mugging going on near an alleyway between two village, two, two homes. So uh, let's say we just we're going to basically stand up and run to the muggers, the two bandits, to try to stop them. So let's try. Let perhaps let's say we're going to try to surprise attack them. Maybe take our weapon out and try to slash the closest bandit when they're busy mugging the helpless merchant. So let's say um, the chances that we have a successful sneak attack have to be affected by the by the fact that we have a heavy suit of armor on. Or we have armor on. We're not like a full-on suit of knight. But we have armor on. So that does inhibit our ability to completely sneak without being heard. You hear the clanging around. So our modifier for yes could just be one, or we might not even include it at all. But because of that, the fact that, that the bandits are busy and they're not completely aware of their surroundings, that gives us a slight jump in the yes so let's go back to the two for yes now the no the question here is can we successfully sneak up on the bandits to attack because of our suit of armor this is the the yes is more in the in the in the um related to our, our experience as, as a seasoned adventurer but the no should actually be for the suit of armor we're wearing and this also uh, takes in, in effect, uh, the yes also takes in effect uh, the busyness of, of the muggers. So three, no, four, because we're wearing armor, it might, it might give away our, our approach. So now we'll uh, roll, we can either roll yes or no first. It doesn't really matter. At the end, the end it is, it's going to be two, two rolls. So we're going to roll no first. All right, here we go. And, ooh, okay, yeah, we rolled a 12 with the modifier, so that's 15. So 12 is the no. 
So 15 is the no. Once again, actually, well, our prior roll was, was core 15 without the modifier. Now we're gonna roll the yes. And we rolled a seven, which is pathetic. So that's a nine. We, uh, okay, but, so if this is, we're thinking this is 15, so 15 is truly up here. And then the yes is gonna be down here somewhere. Yeah, it is, uh, they are apart, but I'd say they're probably equally distant apart. So this is a very good no. This is, I, I'd say this is a, a, this is a good no. As strange as that sounds. So with that in mind, a good no would be, I'd say that they hear our armor and they prepare for battle. I'd say we keep it as basic as that. Like we're not successful in the sneak attack. But they do, t so they turn around, they both see us, they, they both see us, our character, and they prepare for battle, just to keep it really basic. The, the, the merchant being mugged is thrown aside, pushed against the floor, they're, they're, they've stopped what they're doing, and they're now focused on us. So our, our sneak attack was a failure, but we, we weren't injured, we, we didn't trip or fall. I'd say if our yes was down here, and the no was up here, it would have been far more disastrous because of that, again, the gap that, that's considered as the magnitude of the outcome. So that, that is essentially my um, Oracle system. And I guarantee this has been used before by other people. This is not complicated at all. I've seen other people use 2D20s uh, uh, for um, Oracles. I've seen people use uh, D100 for Oracles, percentage die. This is just something I prefer. I like using 2D20s and the modifier uh, concept is not always included for me, or I, I'm sorry, I don't always include the modifiers. If it's out of the, the character's hands, then I might not use the modifier. If a modifier is necessary for the environment, then I might just use uh, one depending on the, the question. So, you know, weather, condition, weather conditions, uh, the NPC, if he's trustworthy, I might use one of these, but it's really hard to say. Th this is very expendable. I'm sorry. This is very versatile. Uh, and it it's, it's really, fl uh, uh, organic uh, me mechanic. You can change it around. So, but this is how I use it. No. And yes, the dice that I have, I don't have a lot of dice com compared to other D and D players, but, uh, this is really what I use for the brightest separate colors I can find. Um, but yeah, that's my Oracle system. That's a yes, no, and with probability modifiers on both the yes or no. And you're basically rolling against a, a, a you know, external force. So, and you always have to phrase the questions from your character's point of view for success. Um, you never want to ask a, um, a, disadvantage, a disadvantage question saying, will my character fail? You want to say, will my character succeed? That's just, for, that's how I do it. That's how I like to phrase the uh, questions from the character's point of view. It also keeps your character, your approach to the game, optimistic. But it's also a challenge, as clearly as you saw, we lost. Well, we didn't lose. We had two failures in this example. But I hope I made sense. I'm kind of tripping on my words as usual, but this is how I I roll my Oracle. So, And this is how we're going to do it moving forward, because I really like this approach, and it took me some time to uh, get back into playing solo uh, RPGs and to keep this uh, keep this in play for the future videos. But as always, thank you for uh, guys for watching and I'll see you next time.